Another beautiful spring day. Happy with where the yard is at. I'm seeing some pretty good green coming up compared to a lot of the other lawns. So we're getting there. We are getting there. One blade of grass at a time. So on to the topic of this video, how to use the ortho hose in sprayer. I'm gonna try and make this as basic as possible. I'm gonna just give you the nuts and bolts and go over the units, all that good stuff. So let's dive into this. Why do we recommend this? Well, for starters, it can hold up to 32 ounces of concentrate. On the side of the cup, you've got markings 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, all the way up to 32 ounces and markings in between that. That's why it's so important to know how big your property is or the area that you're treating. That way you know how much concentrate you need to put into the cup. So let's take the Biostim pack for example. We know that the products in there, the RGS, the Air Rate, the Humic 12, the 002 microgreen, we're gonna go out at three ounces per thousand square feet once a month on any of those products. So if we have a 4,000 square foot yard, four times three, that's 12. So we know we need 12 ounces of product in the cup to spray out over that 4,000 square feet. Another reason why I like this one so much is, you hear that? When you open this up, the hose or straw or whatever you wanna call this thing, the little tip on the end right here is weighted. So when you are moving around the yard, when you're going side to side or if you tilt it back or forward, that little hose or the straw, again, whatever you call that thing, that's gonna move around in the cup. Wherever the liquid goes, that's where that hose is gonna go as well because it has that weighted bottom to it. My turn. Ah, I'm working. Calibrating the hose in sprayer. Let's talk about that. John Perry's done a video on this. So is Alan Hayne, the lawn care nut. I'll link those in the description box below. But you wanna go ahead and connect this up to a hose and spray out a gallon, time that, see how long that takes. So let's go ahead and do that. So just like uh, John and Alan have showed, it is two gallons a minute. Repetition is the key to learning. Right, Alan? That's why we did this. Just... All right, so yes, it's two gallons a minute. Right here is my two gallon mark. I don't know if you can see that on camera. You can see the one gallon one down there. But yeah, two gallons is right there. And it came out to right at a minute. It's about 58 seconds. But two gallons a minute. We know it's that. So one test that I wanna try out is, does length of hose matter with the ortho? So I've got 200 feet of hose going from the house, stretched all the way, almost to the cul-de-sac. Not quite, but I'm gonna connect this up and try the bucket test out here to see if the length of hose changes the flow rate and changes the two gallons a minute. So let's do that. So right at a minute, two gallons. Length of hose does not change that. Okay, no matter what, we know that two gallons a minute is gonna come out of the hose in sprayer. Doesn't matter the length of hose that you have, if the bib's turned all the way on, halfway, almost shut, that doesn't matter. Two gallons a minute, 
no matter what. Now what is gonna matter is the dial right here. We wanna make sure we set that appropriately. One thing that I don't want you to do is think that you have to set the dial to the amount of ounces that you're putting out per thousand. That's, that's wrong. So if you're putting out six ounces per thousand square feet, you do not wanna put this to six ounces. Now why is that? We know because of math, if you put this on six ounces, because this is going to pump out two gallons a minute, it's going to pump out six ounces in 30 seconds. So that's, you're, you're gonna be running through the yard. Do you really wanna be, you wanna be sprinting when you're, when you're doing this? I, I, I don't. So that's why we tell people to start out by putting this on three ounces because that three ounces is gonna get pumped out in about a minute over a thousand square feet. So to spray out three ounces per thousand, it should take you about a minute. You can go at a nice leisurely pace. If you wanna go faster, you dial this up. If you wanna go slower, you can dial this down. For me, I tend to walk a little bit faster, so I'll dial this up to four, maybe even at the five and one third ounce mark, because again, I walk pretty fast and I can get that much product out in a nice even coverage in that amount of time. So let's talk about that, the nice even coverage that you wanna get when using this. So how do you do that? Well, what we want you to do is walk the area that you're treating multiple times. So for this area right here on the side of my house, what I would do is I would start here and I would walk back towards the house, come back and just keep going back and forth. And then what I would do is I would go back and forth like this. So you're creating kind of like a checkerboard pattern when you're walking the property. That way you know that you're getting that good even coverage over the area that you're treating. Now this is not a thousand square feet on this side right here. This is more, I think this was like 5,000 square feet, but we're gonna call it a thousand square feet just so I can illustrate what I'm trying to tell you here. So if I'm trying to spray out, let's say RGS just on this section right here, if I'm gonna go six ounces for this thousand square feet, I've put my dial on three, I've walked back and forth and then gone side to side, and I'm about, let's say, two thirds of the way through it, and my cup is completely empty, I've walked too fast. To compensate for that, that's why we have the dial here on the hose end. If we're gonna walk really fast, like we've just done, we've put out the six ounces over the thousand square feet, and we have some left over in the cup, we can dial this up a little bit to get the rest of that product out over the area. On the opposite side of that, if you wanna walk a little bit slower, you can dial this back to let's say a two or even a one, and you can go at a slower pace. That way you're not just roasting through your product and you only get about two thirds of the way through your thousand square feet. So that's why this dial is good because you can compensate for your walk speed and how much product is getting sucked up through the ortho and putting it out over your area that you're treating. When you're spraying with a hose in, what I want you to do is keep your elbow tucked in at your side, and then you're gonna wave your hand back and forth in about two to three foot swaths. Now let's talk about some what ifs. We're spraying with the hose in sprayer, we've got some brown liquid coming out of the end, then all of a sudden it starts coming out clear. What do you do then? If this happens, all you gotta do is stop right where you're at and do a few quick trigger pulls until it starts mixing again and you've got brown liquid coming out of the end. There are particulates in our products that are good for the lawn that can get hung up in the sprayer. That's why you should shake them really well before you put them into the hose and sprayer and spray them out. But again, if this happens, if it's coming out clear, all you gotta do is stop right where you're at, few quick trigger pulls and it should clear itself out. Another thing that you can do is dial the hose in sprayer all the way up to an eight so that those particulates can get blown through. Once they're blown through, it should start mixing again. You should have brown liquid coming out of the end of it. You can dial it back down to a three and keep walking the area that you're treating. Now, one thing that I've noticed using the ortho hose end is when I fill the cup up all the way up to 32 ounces to treat my property, once I've gotten down to the bottom here, I've noticed that it's starting to come out a little bit more clear than brown. And this, this is situational, this isn't all the time. I've just noticed this with my property. So what do you do in that situation? Which you gotta understand is if the cup is full, so is the line. So it doesn't have to work as hard to pull the product out of the cup, mix with the water, and come out of the end. So once I get down to the bottom here, it's the, the hose in here, the, the way this device works, it's, it's working a little bit harder 
to gather up what product is here at the bottom. So what I've done is I've dialed this up. I'll probably, I've gone up to a six on this and just walk a little bit faster so that it can suck up the rest of the product that's at the bottom here. Again, that's situational. That's just what's happened in my case. That's what I've had to do. I know this probably isn't the case for everybody, but if that is happening, if you do have to fill this all the way up, you get down to the bottom and it's just coming out a little bit more clear than when you started, dial it up, walk a little bit faster, you should be fine. All right, now for the age-old question of what did I do with the screen on this bad boy? This is a brand new unit, so I'm gonna show you exactly what I do with the screen. I take it out completely, just get rid of it. It flows a lot better without that screen in it. Now let's talk about actually using the hose and sprayer and stretching our water hose out into the turf and applying our next products. So this is, this is something I had to learn by trial and error, but I've finally figured it out. It is a learning curve. Here's how I do it. So my water bib is on the other side of the garage over here. So go up the driveway on the other side of the garage. That's where the bib is at. I connect my hose and I drag it all the way out here into the lawn and I go to right about, let's see, I stretch it to right about here. I know you can't really tell in this video, but that's, I think that's about 150 feet worth of hose that I gotta stretch out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start as close to the sidewalk as possible. I'm gonna spray starting there and walking back into the lawn. So what I'm gonna do is I'm stretching the hose all the way out, I'm starting right up against the sidewalk here and I'm gonna start spraying all the way back to the driveway right there. Once I hit the driveway, I'm gonna move over, kick my hose over, come all the way back out to this point right here, spray back down to the driveway, kick the hose back over and just keep repeating that process. And the reason I do it like this is I wanna keep my product where I sprayed it. I don't wanna start up here in the middle and spray towards the sidewalk to just have to drag my hose back to the area that I treated and getting it all over my hose, all that kind of good stuff. I just wanna keep the product in the area that I sprayed. So by starting out up against the sidewalk and walking back towards the source, I can make sure that I'm not walking through the area that I already treated. For those that have watched me for a while, you know that I used to like to walk backwards when I sprayed. That was because it was comfortable for me, and I also like the idea of not having to walk through my spray or the area that I treated. So that's why I walked backwards. But with the hose and sprayer, I've actually become pretty comfortable with walking forward. And the reason for that is I can keep the hose in my one hand while I'm spraying with the other. And while I'm walking forward, I can just move the hose out of the way as I'm walking back to my source. So that's the routine that I've become comfortable with. When it comes to spraying, whatever's comfortable for you, that's what you should do. So if you wanna walk forward, backwards, whatever works, that's what you should do. What I want you to be concerned with is getting a good even application. So just kind of randomly walking around the yard and not having a pattern to what you're doing, I would avoid that. You wanna keep track of where you sprayed and where you haven't. So by walking back and forth and then side to side, you're creating that checkerboard pattern. It's easier to keep track of where you sprayed. That's the habit that I want you to get in. All that being said, at the end of the day, this is a $9 sprayer. It's a $9 piece of plastic. So take that for what it's worth. There is a learning curve to using this, especially if you've never used one before. I think I'm going on like my eighth or ninth, I, I don't know, it's been, I've had a few applications with it now and I've got a system that I think works for me. So that's what I suggest. Don't get frustrated, don't give up on this. Use it a couple of times, practice, make some applications. It's gonna take an adjustment if you've never sprayed with it before. I know John Perry and Alan Hain have touched on this in their videos, but I'm gonna touch on it as well. Let's say we're only using about 16 ounces of product. We're only filling the cup up to right there you can fill the rest of the cup up with water. That way you're cutting the product with water inside the cup so that it's diluting a little bit better and the straw can pick it up better to get it out of the end of the hose and onto your turf without fail. This happens every time I go to make a video. Trucks and more trucks and more trucks, sometimes buses, maybe even some cars.
this is this is my life well, welcome to my life all right so there we go there's the beginner's guide on how to use the ortho hose and sprayer to spray out the next products what kind of questions do you have for me what do you still need answered leave those in the comment section below i'll do my best to answer them for you thumbs up if you like the video share it out subscribe to the channel click on the bell so you get notifications when i upload a new video to the channel you know all that good social media stuff keep on keeping on my lawn care brothers and sisters from other misters and i will catch you next time here's just a few clouds in the sky it's as blue as can be we got a nice breeze it's like 70 degrees right now how am i possibly supposed to work on a day like today john perry it's gorgeous